Okay, in this tutorial I'd like to explain how to use MEX. Now, a MEX allow a user to define custom functions. And if we look at the toolbar here, the second toolbar is the MEC bub. So I can select that and I double tap on the ether in order to create the MEC bub. Now, let's create a simple function. This first function that I want to create is something that's going to simply round to the nearest penny. So I'm going to call this function my sense function. And this function has one parameter, we'll call it x. And to define what the function actually is, I'll tap the bottom. And I'm going to use the round function. So I'm going to say round. I tap on the parameter x to make use of that. In this case, I'm going to multiply by 100. Uh, hit the NPREN, and I'm going to divide by 100. Alright, so now I've defined my sense function. Uh, and let's, let's test it out. Now, there's two ways that I can make use of this function. I can, I can click on the top of the function itself, and I'll just put uh, 1.2345 And you see it rounds it to the nearest penny, 1.23. Uh, the other way I can access my custom functions is I can come down here to the custom tab and I can see that sense is located here. So I'll just click sense and again I can put in 1.23987 and again it will round it to the nearest penny. All right, so that's a that's a simple mech. Um, now, let's try a slightly more advanced one. Uh, these functions that you create can have multiple parameters, not just one. So I'm going to create a function that will allow me to calculate the tip on a bill. So I'm going to call this function tip split. And this function has three parameters. Uh, the first parameter is called A, that's the amount of the bill. The second parameter is T, that's how much you want to tip. And the third parameter is P, the number of people that are, um, that are eating. Okay. And now, previously, I just defined the equation directly right in the bottom, um, which I can always do. But I can also make use of external bubbles, and so I'm going to do that in this case. So, in this case, I, I want um, to calculate what the, what the bill is for each person um, based on the amount and the tip. Okay, so I'm going to say, okay, I want to take A, the amount of the bill, and I'm going to multiply that. 1 plus the tip amount, T, and then I will divide that by P, the number of people. And, and then I'm just going to set the result equal to that bubble. Okay, now let's try this out. So I'm going to use my tip split function. And I have a bill of $35.89. I want an 18% tip. And there's three people eating. And so this tells me that it will be fourteen eleven. Now, of course, we've got lots of, uh, lots of decimal points. I'd really like it to round to the nearest cent. So I'm going to... Um, I'm going to modify my equation here. I'm going to add our sense function. Okay, so um, I used the sense function that we defined before in order to round this to the nearest penny, and now I've got 1412. So, uh, so that's pretty handy. All right, so now let me try a much more advanced uh, mech. 
Um, and this one is going to give me the payment amount on a loan. All right, so I'm going to call this function payment. And we have, again, three parameters. First parameter I'll call A, the amount of the loan. Second parameter I'll call R, the interest rate. And the third parameter I will call N, the number of periods, payment periods for the loan. Now, first thing we want to do is, so this, this calculation is actually um, a bit sophisticated. So first thing I want to do is I want to define a function that I'm going to iterate over for each of the months. So I'm going to create a function data type. And we'll say we want 1 plus the interest rate divided by 12. So it's going to be the the monthly interest rate. And I'm going to take that to the negative kth power. K is the um, the iterator. And we'll end that. All right, so there's my definition of the function that I want to iterate over. Then what I want to do is I want to take the sum from 1 to n, the number of periods, of this function. Okay. And now I'm going to take the amount of loan, divide by our value so far. And this should give us our monthly payment, but of course, again, it's not rounded to the nearest cents. So the final answer then, I'll take cents and enter in our result. And we get our, uh, we've now defined this, um, this payment Mac. So let's give it a try. So I want to do a payment. I have a thousand dollar, ten thousand dollar loan. It's a car loan, for instance. At five percent interest for thirty six months. And our monthly payment is going to be two ninety nine seventy one. So as you can see, this is a quite powerful tool for creating Max. Um, actually, while we're at it, let's, um, let's then go into explaining libraries. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to rename this ether, and I'm going to call it um, demolib. Okay, so I've created this ether that has these three mechs that are, you know, are potentially pretty useful. So now I want to create a brand new ether. And you know I can go and I can see in the custom area, um, the custom area is blank. I have no custom functions. But it'd be really nice if I could have access to those mechs that I just created. So I'm going to come in here, and I'm going to include a, a mech. So I'm going to look for demo mech, or demo lib, right here. So I tap it. So now this ether's mechs are going to get included in my current ether. So when I come to look, I can see that those mechs now show up, even though they're not on this ether. So I'm going to click Payment, and I'll do my calculation again. 10,000 at 5% interest over 36 months gives my answer, 299.71. So it's a a kind of useful way to build up your own libraries of your own custom functions and then include them in um, subsequent ethers that you might use. So hopefully you'll find that to be a handy little tool.